Right, 12 o'clock, let's crack on. Um, thanks for being here, everyone. So, the rules of today are that Lucinda and I are going to be incredibly blunt and straight talking, but we mean this with love, okay? And so the goal is to be completely brutally honest with whatever website we're looking at, but to give constructive feedback, because that's the only way you can really improve. Um, I don't do well with molly coddling and pussyfooting around stuff, so, in fact, I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that, aren't I? <laughs> uh, but before we um, crack on, uh, Lucinda, who are you? What do you do? Like, why are you here? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so I'm a copywriter um, and a content marketing strategist. I basically work with people all around the world to help them convert more prospects into sales um, and turn their kind of customers into a tribe of raving fans. Um, we work kind of with any kind of business, um, any type of industry, and um, we mostly work on blogs, email marketing, and website content, so sales pages and stuff like that. Um, history wise, I've been doing it for about 10 years. I've got clients all over the world. Uh, like Siam, you might find I'm a little bit blunt, um, <laughs> but again, I mean it with love. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, just here to help. Looking forward to it. Sweet. Okay, let's crack on. So what we'll do, I guess the format of today is I'm going to run through, I'm going to start sharing my screen, and we're going to run through a whole bunch of um, different pages which are good, bad, ugly, <laughs> very ugly, you'll soon see, um, and just Lucinda and I are going to sort of give our two cents worth, um, and, and then we'll crack on to the user website. So uh, my WAPers, my Wealth Action Plan planners um, are they've submit, submitted their websites and then if anyone w w and bleh, and if you have a website you want to um, cover just pop it in the chat box and we will go through it right so can you all see my screen it should be pinky and purpley yep cool right so the first one I want to talk about is my fairy pen pal so this is the um, little well it was a little side hustle that my wife and I were doing and it's now turned into a, a proper business which is cool um, so if we just go to the proper so that's actually the landing page so let's go to the main website so one of the things which I obsess about so this is why I think today will be helpful because Lucinda is really good with words and I am dreadful with words um, <clears throat> But the thing that I do is CRO, Conversion Rate Optimization. And I'm nothing special. I've never done a CRO course. I've never, like, like all the only things I know from CRO is playing around with my own money and data. So all I do, like, I start off with Facebook ads. I was really shit at Facebook ads. I was driving traffic to all sorts of landing pages. Didn't get any results. And I just kept tweaking stuff. And I've done this for the last 10 years. Just didn't work. Why not? Okay, let's tweak this. Did that work? No. Okay, let's do this. Did that work? No. Uh, and then eventually, after like 50 tweaks of a website um, and all, and also the Facebook ad, things start to work. And so, literally over the last decade, I've just found what works and what doesn't work. So I'm not an expert in any way. All I'm sharing is hindsight. Um, now, any website I'm showing today, which is mine, so like my fairy pen pal, the WAP, etc. The copy is shit because no one's done the copywriting yet, and I, I think it's. I know I should, I should probably get Lucinda to do the copy. Um, the copy has actually been done by me, uh, and I'm not that good at writing. So, yeah. But <clears throat> the thing you have to be obsessed with when it comes to CRO and building landing pages is that every person that lands on your page, you have to imagine that they're an ADHD chimpanzee, a toddler chimpanzee with no attention span whatsoever. So you have to basically fulfill um, with them. The, so what's in it for me? That's all that anyone thinks about when they're on a landing page. Everyone has like a million tabs open, always. Everyone's got their phone probably next to them or in their pocket. Like we are drowned out with attention getters. And so if you're competing with lots of different tabs, the person probably wants to finish what they're doing and watch some YouTube videos or text or whatever you really have to hold their attention for as long as you can. And every day, and I mentioned this with my traders, every day we sort of replenish our brain glucose. Um, so we top it up to, I don't know, call it 100%. And throughout the day, our brain glucose diminishes. 
And this is one of the reasons, this is probably the main, no, not probably, it is the main reason why we lose inhibitions throughout the day, which is why all murders happen, pretty much most murders happen past 10 p.m. Most one night stands, cheating, all that sort of stuff, all the, you know, the seedy stuff hap and fights happen from 10 p.m. onwards. Because we're, we're lacking brain glucose, y yada, yada, yada. So that's why people make poor decisions at night time. Um, and so whenever you're landing on a website, if you have to scroll or click click through things, what's, what's happening is that you're basically soaking up more brain glucose than this person's chimp mind has allocated for, for your website, if that makes sense. So whenever I'm looking at a website, and I'm even my own or someone else's, I'm imagining I am a you know, an ADHD chimpanzee, and you've got to hold my attention. And remember, people on average scroll more than the, the higher than the Eiffel Tower every day. Now, that sounds crazy, right? So just think of it this way. Here's my phone. I don't know how big this is. What is that? Five, six inches tall? Whatever. When you're scrolling, you know, one, uh, one full screen scroll, that's basically you've scrolled six inches or five inches, however big your phone is. And people are scrolling so often, like on their Facebook, Insta, whatever, Google, and you scroll the Eiffel Tower every single day. And so you're always competing with that. So really, we're just day trading attention. And CRO is so similar to trading. This is why I love it, because it's so similar. It's just data. You're mining data, analyzing data, making tweaks. You're just a mini scientist, but for landing pages. So that's sort of my preface. Um, anything to add on that, Lucinda? Because we've sort of um, learned all the same stuff over the years, haven't we? Yeah, so I, I have a similar kind of approach, which is instead of what's in it for me, I'm like, why do I care? That's the mm. question I ask about every single thing. Why do I care? I'm sat here on my phone. Why do I care about what you've got to say? Um, yeah. And the only other thing I wanted to add in as well, because you said like you've written this yourself, I did go through all of these pages before we got on the Zoom call. <laughs> um, Shit. And although you say you haven't got any professional copywriting experience, you're not far off the mark with it all. So you, ha you are doing Woohoo! most of the right things. So it's probably important to distinguish that so that, the, um, so that people understand the importance of the copy as well as the conversion optimization and that it works together. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. I was slightly panicking there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay. So let's look at my favorite pen pal. So this is the main site. Now, the thing with websites is that everything, so when the page loads, that's what's called above the fold. And the moment you have to scroll down, that's called below the fold. And so everything above the fold has to be super choreographed to you know your call to action or whatever you want them to do. If you want them to scroll down, you need to make it obvious that there's more below it, um, or, or you know even put something that says you know scroll scroll below or something. But for here, for fairy, we just want people to do two things: either go and find their fairy right now, right now, or learn more. And if they click learn more, it's just going to scroll down. I think that's if my internet works, by the way. Oh no, it goes to what's included, okay. Um, I haven't looked at my own sites for a, a while actually. So, and I've, I've trialed all sorts of different things with the, you know, my web page. Now I don't drive traffic to your web page. So the thing with um, driving traffic and stuff like that is, I'm just gonna draw some eyeballs and this is me driving traffic. Um, you should never really drive to your homepage. Um, just don't do that. So I look at this in a military term. So when you're um, invading another country, sounds bad. Um, so this is the country. And let's say all the baddies are across this border over here. What you don't put is your main freaking base right by the border. That's just asking for trouble. So what you do is you have your main, oper your main base. So in Afghanistan, it's Kandahar. Um, over here, miles away from the action. Obviously, this is, in fact, Kandahar is nowhere near over there. But ignore the geography. Long story short, you put it away from the battle. And then what you have are FOBs, forward operating bases. And so you then have a whole bunch of supply lines which you have protected. So you have air cover, ground cover, etc. Because you need to resupply, rewater your troops, etc. And it's these forward operating bases where they stage their raids. So if there's you know a big base over here, you don't send a raiding party from Kandahar straight over there. You, they they launch from the forward operating base, which is well secure, and then they make their little incursions. So they may do like a ten mile hike up to the target, and then 
neutralize some people. Um, and you know, your landing page is exactly the same. It really is. Kandahar over here is your home page. Don't drive traffic to your freaking home page because it's too generic. Your home page typically has all sorts of information and you're going to baffle them. They're like, oh my god, there's so much going on here. So when you're driving traffic, you drive them straight to your forward operating base. So if you're, I don't know, if you're a nutrition, nutrition, so I was thinking of Stuart Roberts here, so he's, I don't know if Stuart's here today, but he normally is. Um, he's like, he specializes in like health for men above, I think, 45 years old. So what he's not going to do is drive them to a generic health website. He's get like the landing page he'll drive them to is, hey, you know, if you're 45, between 45 and 60 and you're a bloke, you're probably suffering from these things. And so when an old, an older bloke lands on that landing page, you go, oh yeah, that's me, that's me. And that satisfies what Lucinda says, you know, why, why do I care or what's in it for me, etc. So this is, yeah, so sorry, I didn't mean to talk, I didn't think I'd be talking about war today. <laughs> um, so going back to the website, um, yeah, I don't drive people to this landing page. Um, yeah, we've got a cool video here, yada yada yada. Uh, and I'm sure it can be improved, and we've got proof, you know, testimonials. In fact, we need to add more because we've got like hundreds. But where we do drive traffic to is this page, eight week trial. <clears throat> and by the way, I know I've got a lot of tabs, but I will can breeze I just... through them. Yeah, go for it. Can I just add something in? You were just talking about above the fold and below the fold. And I just want to add something in to kind of explain why it's so important what you put above the fold. So from a copywriting perspective, you're going to have a headline and probably a subheadline as well um, above the fold. Now, any traffic that you drive to your site, you're going to get people bounce straight back off it. You've got what is it? I think I think we're down to like three milliseconds to get people's attention now. When they <laughs> the page. It's ridiculous. So if you get that above the fold bit wrong, your bounce rate, which is the number of people that hit your page and then leave immediately without doing anything else is going to be really high. And that's just kind of it's a, it's a waste of your money. It's a waste of, of opportunity, because if you've done a better job above the fold, then you might have been able to convert them into a subscriber on your list and then into a customer and so on. So that kind of above the fold definition is really important to understand. Um, just to give you an idea, kind of an average bounce rate, if we just pick an average industry and an average bounce rate, 50% um, is average. So that's half the people you're going to lose. And that's if you're doing an average okay job. If you're doing a bad job, you could lose anything up to 90, 95%, 100% of them. Yeah. And this is why sometimes I've heard some people say, oh, there's one guy, this was a couple of years ago, who said, oh, I've got a deal like, um, at Norwich City, because this was when they were in the Premier League, um, I can get like this this little banner in the Norwich City football ground of, you know, the name of my company, not the website, just the name of my company. And I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And he was like, why? But there's going to be like, throughout the season, X amount of people. But then I was like, yes, but it's just simple numbers, mate. You don't even have your website there, so it's the name of your company. What is the percentage of people that will get their phone out and try and Google that your, your company name to find your website? Very slim. Those that then land in your website, how many of them are going to bounce off straight away because you've got a boring-ass website? Loads. And then those that do stick around, are they going to scroll down? I, I forgot the percentage. It's something like 40% of people don't scroll below the fold, like ever. Um, or on a regular basis, they just don't scroll. And then... Those that do scroll and have a little nosy around, it's probably 1% of those people that are going to buy. So really, you need like 10 million people to see your little football banner for you to get a sale or two. And that's why sometimes brand advertising doesn't work unless you're a massive company that's you know everywhere. But for a small business like that, bad, bad move. Um, so yeah, Lucinda spot on there. So with my fairy pen pal, so this is where we do drive traffic, and you'll realise there's no nav bar, like you can't go anywhere else. So all I'm doing is I want you to make one of two decisions: either don't do anything and go away, or become a fairy, or become a fairy pen pal. And so there's no distraction. I'm not sharing any social media anywhere, um, nothing like that. It's literally um, headline my fairy pen pal. It's a bit f weird in itself, and. As Lucinda's probably or probably will say, um, like the, the sole goal of your headline is to get them to read the subheadline, and then that sole goal is to get them to read the other headline. Um, but what probably happens, or most likely happens, is they'll watch the headline or the re read the headline. They'll probably look at the video or the picture. They'll read the subheadline of the picture. Then they'll probably go to this this headline. 
but every single thing is designed to get them to scroll down or, or do whatever. Now, I've actually made an, an error here, a faux pas. So, at the moment, as it, as it looks right now, it looks like this is, you know, there's nothing below the fold. So what I should actually do is maybe do it like this, so they see this, this wavy bit, or even the tops. Can you see down here where I've sort of, see, if, if people see that, and they go, oh look, and they can half see, you know, some writing. What does that, what does that tell the brain? The brain in instinctively knows that there's stuff below the fold, and so they may just out of curiosity scroll down a little bit just to see what that sentence said. So this is what I try and do sometimes with, with the fold. Don't end it nice and clear cut like this. That's a rookie error. Try and do it so there is maybe a little bit of text. So then you're increasing the probability of a, of a scroll down. Um, but then you, ha you run into the issue of devices and devices, are, you know, I'm on a desktop of a certain resolution. It needs to be, um, you, you then also need um, a responsive website. So for example, if you're on an iPad, let's say that's sort of the dim dimensions, you need something which is responsive. Now this is actually brought something else up. Shit, on the iPad version, the nav bar pops up. Well, that's not very good. Um, I'll be getting my web guide to get rid of that. So that's weird how websites do that. And on this, yeah, so everything looks a bit different. And then let's go see what it looks like on the mobile. Mobile is probably- Can I just add a little bit in yeah, to explain why, a bit more about why you don't want a nav bar on a landing yeah, page? Because it. it ties in really well with the copy. So with your copy, what you're always trying to do is you're trying to meet the person where they're at in their head and move them through the journey that they need to go through before they do the next step that you want them to do. Now, usually it would be either buy or sign up to your list. That's, that's generally the two things you want them to do. Um, and what you don't want is distractions um, or opportunities for them to get lost along the way because we're very, very easily distracted. Um, and when you've got just one very clear, simple path, it's much easier to kind of drag them along it and, and pull them to where you want them to go. So another mistake that's often made um, in the copy is to have multiple calls to action. Um, so where it's like, you know, find your fairy and then later on it's like, oh, go follow us on social media or oh, sign up to our list here when really all you want them to do is find the fairy. So just use that same call to action. Find the fairy, find the fairy, find the fairy. Yeah. I don't know what you've done on this page, so I don't want to... <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. Honestly, you know, I can't, we've been friends for years now. You can be as brutally straight with me as possible. You'll never offend me. Um, the, the... But yeah, so anyway, so uh, going back to the nav bar, if you've got a nav bar, that's literally an invitation to go somewhere else. And all you want to be doing is dragging them towards that one single point that you want them to go to. However, there's always, I guess there's a flip side to everything. And I think I now know why there is a nav bar as you scroll down. Um, this will lead us into Hotjar actually. So we use a, a thing called Hotjar. And Hotjar is a way that you can basically see exactly what a user um, sees and what they're clicking and when they're clicking, etc. I'll, I'll show you this in, in a second. And I think I've done this on purpose actually. Now I realize, because I, I built this page. I personally built this page, by the way. Um, like. Oh, probably a year ago and I think it's because I, I did some tracking and I realized um, when we I mean I, I, I got data from when there was no nav bar and it was all good and I was like okay let's put the ad bar as they scroll down and I was tracking which pages they go to and if there's any black holes uh, and when I say a black hole normally in a website you'll probably have a page where people go to and then they'll like oh, bugger off because they're bored or, or whatever and I, I found that we I think there's a slight uptick of the, I, I think what was it people some people wanted more information and so because it is there is some information here but you know if they want to find more I think they all then went to about us they clicked this one and then they ended up coming back yeah so then a big block of boring text there um, but then they they clicked around and then they actually bought so I think that that's why but in fact, before we go into Hotjar, I just wanted to cover something quickly on that landing page. Sorry, forward slash eight week trial. Um, yeah, so the call to action, like Lucinda said, is consistent. We've got two call to actions here. Find your fairy, find your fairy. And I, I, I don't mean to be mean or rude, but people are retarded, like in general. Like people are so stupid, it's ridiculous. 
in in general, as in the mass public, you would be surprised how many stupid questions we have. Like, I shit you not, we had this probably the other month. Someone was on our realistic trader live chat bot, bot, bearing in mind the the URL is therealistictrader.com, and the question was, "What's your main website URL?" And we're like, "You're on it." <laughs> um, like they had to go to a website go to the live chat and said what's your main website and it was like you're, you're on it and so this is sort of this sort of questions you get sometimes and so when you're tr you have to spell things out in a, in a nice way so in in my opinion there's probably a little bit too much text for my liking but it, it's it's split up nicely in these steps and people if if you can get them to read these steps people you know it, it makes sense um, and another thing, you've got to be really anal to detail. So, for example, this this font, I've just remembered that the exclamation mark looks like an L. So look down here where it says ferial. <laughs> That's an exclamation mark, not an L. And let's just zoom in a bit. Oh, God, I've lost it. Yeah, you can see it's an exclamation mark, but it's just tiny things like that. Someone, out, I promise you, someone out there is going like, well, this company's shit. They can't even look at their own copy. They've typed fairy wrong. And then people will just bounce off from that. Now, those sorts of people you probably don't want as customers because who wants a douchebag as a customer? But yeah, so yeah, it's just little things like that. So if, what I probably may have to do is go and get my web dev just to change the font for that exclamation mark just to satisfy my OCD um, and to satisfy that one person that will kick off because you've spelt fairy wrong. Um, so, yeah, right, now the next thing, and by the way, I will shut up in a bit, bit. I've got a whole bunch of things I want to say and then we're going to get Lucinda talking more. Um, so, f Hotjar I find is pretty cool. Now, as you can see, I haven't upgraded to the full, full thing, so it's only capturing 100 sessions a day, but the thing is, that's all you really need. So, let's, which website is this looking at at the moment? This is looking at, wait a minute. Uh, the WAP. So this is the WAP website. So for example, in the last 24 hours, you can see, actually, so on the home, yeah, there's not been, been much on the homepage because I'm not driving any traffic. So when you drive traffic, you'll automatically get a whole bunch of organic um, traffic as well because people will click on it and then they'll come back at a later date. But so we can see this person here at the top. So everything is anonymized. But they, are, they, they landed on one page and they spent one minute and 14. So I can actually click play and see what they did. Oh, I'm sorry. And you can choose the speed. So this is one time speed. Okay. Maybe their problem's loading it. I'm not sure. This is a, a weird, weird one. Let's have a look at another one. Wait, let's look at multiple pages. Okay, so this person spent 37 minutes on our page. So they probably loaded up and then walked away. Went for a wee, a very long wee. Um, let's look at this one. Uh, three minutes. So this person, here we go. So it looks like they jumped on an iPad. They went to our main website. They're scrolling around. And then went straight to terms and conditions. Okay. So maybe, maybe this is somewhat of a warm buying signal because sometimes the people that they've sort of made up their mind that they want to do it, people are like, okay, what are the gotchas? And they may then go to the terms and conditions just to go, right, how is this company going to screw me over? Um, or they want to cancel. Yeah, I've just seen that fame. <laughs> Mind you, he's not, he or she is not really scrolling, which means... Are they even looking at the page? Remember, they're on an iPad, so they could have just, you know, put it down on the sofa or, or something like that. Um, okay, they're not doing anything else. Yeah. So Hotjar is cool because you can see all sorts of stuff, and there's heat maps and everything. The um, like heat maps, you can see. I don't know if we look at the free trial heat map. Oh, this will take a while. Okay. Yeah. So look at this. You can see that most people click the sign in. So. That's interesting. 
that's very interesting because this is a free trial page so I shouldn't actually have that sign in button there because that's just gonna mislead people but you can see people clicking you can see where on the button they're clicking as well and I've split test the size of bars long thin bars are very shit you need fat chunky um, sorry buttons sorry don't have a long thin button because people like if they have a fat finger on, the, on a small phone they won't be able to click it they'll be like, oh this button doesn't work and they'll move on so get big fat freaking buttons um, <laughs> stuff like that and you can see here how people are pretty accurate in terms of yeah so and this you see there's a lot of clicks here that's people clicking that to scroll down that's the people are not just clicking that because that, that's the video there they're clicking that to then scroll. So people are okay. So most people, this watch, this just shows me most people that land on this web page are right-handed. That helps some maybe. Um, the so the okay. So the thing that you could derive from this, if most people are scrolling with their right hand and clicking and dragging on the right-hand side, what you shouldn't do is have this video on the right-hand side. Because then they'll have to go, oh shit, extra brain, great, the brain glucose. I'm going to have to move an extra five centimeters to the left to scroll um, or, you know, stuff like that. So that's Hotjar. I think that's pretty cool. Let's get rid of these as we go. Any other thoughts, Lucinda, whilst we breeze through these? Um, not on the Hotjar stuff. No, I don't think so. Um, no, I mean, there's, uh, you, you touched slightly on the brain glucose, um, which ties in very well with decision fatigue. Yes, exactly. Um, so basically decision fatigue is, is we kind of, we have to make so many decisions throughout the day, like from what to wear to what to eat to when to make a cup of tea, like when to check, like literally, I don't even know. It's got to be in the millions. I'm sure. <laughs> and certainly in my day. Um, and by the end of the day, we start to get what's called decision fatigue, which is where we are tired and fed up and don't make good decisions anymore so what you want to try and do with your sales pages and with your copy and stuff is to try and reduce that decision fatigue for them so that kind of ties us back into the one call to action don't make them choose which call to action to pick don't make them choose where to go on your site like lead them very simply so you're not adding to that decision burden throughout their day and that's super critical to checkout pages as well. If you have to make people click so off, like too many things, they're just going to ah screw this, walk away. In fact, this week I've walked away from a whole bunch of checkouts just because they're like ah go away, I just <laughs> want to buy it. Um, and I'll show you good examples of checkout pages. In a, in fact, I'm going to buy something real time. Um, an advert hit me, and I'm going to buy it, and I'm I'm going to go through the whole checkout process, and that will be hopefully helpful. So here's the web. So. The f so we're actually rebuilding the whole app. Um, so this is why the URL looks a bit weird because this, this is like the the dev version. But the URL also helps um, matters. Don't have a website which no one can freaking spell. Like someone had like a, a Spanish what is it Jacasta Ferrande or something like that. Dot com, and I was like, mate, I know you. I'm your, I'm your friend, and I know what your business is called, but I still can't spell your freaking website. What is an average person that's never heard of you? Like Jocasta Veranda or whatever it's called. Um, don't have complex websites, um, as in names. And also be careful with spelling. So therapists.com um, is a typical, you know, ther it's actually therapists.com. But some people could look at that going therapists.com. So there are certain words you just, just don't put next to each other. Um, so, yeah. So this is my... So this is actually an example of a landing page that only does 7% conversion. So, oh no, it's not, sorry. Uh, where is it? Is it this one? Sorry, this is our, yeah, this one. So this page only does 7% conversion, which is good and all, ah, oh, bloody social icons down here. You need to get rid of them. Um, so this is good and bad. The, and it, a lot of people like you'll see click funnels people or you know some digi marketers going hey I've got a landing page here that does 20% cl um, click through rate or opt-in rate etc or some people go oh, 50% but it really depends on what you're selling what you're trying to get them to opt into and also the target market like it's so freaking easy to get click through rates and opt-ins if you're first of all lying and pr selling the world um, which a lot of pages do is like hey click this thing and this you know 
opt in here to get the three quick tips to lose 10 pounds of weight in two minutes like yeah you're gonna have a high opt-in rate and and also the you know the different niches are thirsty are more thirsty than other niches so for example for like trading type stuff you generally get a really low click-through rate or low opt-in rate because there's so many scammers out there um, whereas if it's something really niche you'll probably get a higher one so for me this is so this is obviously the WAP this is wealth generation it's an average and so 7% I'm happy the business is profitable with a 7% opt-in rate now again I haven't done the cop I've done the copy I haven't got anyone else to do this and I've built it myself so this is me being a, a typical average Norwich business owner that's just mudding my way through so I'm pretty sure you know if I unleashed Lucinda on this page it would help <laughs> um, but what I like to do is the I guess this is a business point of view I like to get things good enough to go and then get the business profitable on a shit you know good enough to go type stuff you know if I can make money on a shitty landing page that I built and I wrote and make money from it great because when I get a professional in what's gonna happen you then have a high probability that the money you pay on that professional it's they're gonna end up up ticking your your opt-in rates etc so uh, so this is obviously above the fold now this is something which I've split test heavily over the last couple of months and it's worked to be a treat remember real estate above the fold is very crucial you mustn't obviously drown people out in too much text which at the moment there's too much text above the fold way too much so this fucking hell, I'm create, critiquing my own website here. But look at this. You see this typing thing? This has worked amazingly. Because what, what happens is I can basically get like two to three headlines or subheadlines in the same real estate space. So you can basically tell them two or three things. Now in hindsight, I should actually make it type faster and delete the words a lot faster. So, which I can do because there's like timers on that. So I'd type it faster because people can read faster than this is freaking typing. Learn more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can get two or three headlines there. Really easy. So I don't know what that plugin's called. I'll have to find it. But yeah, it's really helpful. Um, start your trial now. Here's what it is. Yeah. This is actually not a good web landing page because it's just too much text and also what I found is uh, to begin with I had like eight things I was like do the 30 day trial there's eight different things you could just blah, blah 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 it's too much and even now I've scaled it down to four it's probably still too much do I really need to talk about scaling and funding ops this is getting them onto a 30 day trial I should probably get rid of that and then have three um, I've got some videos here one minute 36 a longer one some people like short and long videos um, so I mean, this is a quick animated. This is Ben. Ninety-second video, but some people like a bit more detail. So I've got a longer video here, which is like thirteen minutes. Hi there, my name is Sam. I'm no one cares. Um, and then a whole, whole bunch of testimonials, etc. So Lucinda, unleash two barrels. Hit me. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, obviously, like you said, you've already got it working a bit so it's not awful <laughs> um, no. so yeah there's a few things that you've done really well on here so the button that you've got there where you've got your start your trial now no contracts no payment details and no captures is a really really smart thing to put there um, because what you're doing there is you're overcoming people's objections like I can't think of the amount of times where I've clicked start a free trial now button hit a payment page where they want my card and I'm like mm. I don't want to pay you just yet. Yeah, bounce. So it's, it, yeah, it's really, really clever to get that in there because you're just kind of nudging them to that that next thing. I think you're right. I spotted the scaling and funding ops thing. Um, if we talk about the journey, so if, if you remember the whole purpose is to meet them at the stage they're at in their journey and nudge them along to where you want them to be, is somebody who's interested in a trial for the WAP looking at scaling and funding at this stage? No. Nah. Probably not. So, yeah, so I think that's that's a very valid point um if you just go back up to your first headline at the top um this is everything about business creation money investing and economics that your parents and school should have taught yeah. you it's a really clever headline mm. um but it, but it needs to be a little bit more concise yeah i agree um so one of the <laughs> i always joke that that what i do as a copywriter most of the time is remove words from things because we tend to put a lot of extra detail a lot of extra fluff 
it's really hard as a business owner when you know everything about your business inside out and upside down to just get the key bits that people actually need to know at that stage. So the headline itself I would keep, but I would drop the word creation. So it's just learn everything about business, money, investing in economics. And I would pick one, either parents or school, um, just to cut it down and make it a little bit shorter. I'd probably say school because we're all quite willing and happy to blame school for everything. Uh, yeah, true. So, <laughs> so yeah, so I, I just cut it a little bit shorter because you've only got those few split seconds to get someone's attention and get them to read. If you hit them with a really long headline, it's either got to be really good to get their attention and hold it or they're going to go, uh, too much words and leave. Um, I wanted to say as well, you, you've got further down, you've got the little short video and the, the longer video because you said some people like short bits of information and some people like long i thought that was a useful thing just to discuss a little bit more when we're talking about copy as well because there's been a real push for video like in the marketing it's like you've got to have video got to have video got to have video and yes you have got to have video but you've also got to have words because not everyone will sit and watch a video um and not everyone will read the words so you really have got to hit them from both angles with it um do you want to scroll down a little bit more? You've, you've got the controls here. So, uh, yeah, testimonials, really important. Um, you've got to have testimonials on anything you do. It does, it, technically, a testimonial isn't part of copy, but it is part of sales. So what you do with testimonials is you kind of play on the, the desire that we all have to be part of the herd, to be safe, to do what everyone else is doing. Um, and it just makes you feel a little bit safer and helps overcome that objection of, oh, I don't know if this is right for me. Oh, I don't know if it's going to work. Oh, is it the right thing to do? Um, just just cool. one quick thing here. I've just realized, uh, and this is how anal to detail you need to be. So we, we, it looks like I didn't do this. We, it looks like we're using Trust Index, which I think is a testimonial compiler. So it's taking testimonials from Google, Trustpilot, all that sort of stuff. But this widget has done something really bad in terms of UI or user interface. Is that so? Look, look at Richard Dwyer. Oh, in fact, Lucinda, you know him. Um, the it has a he's obviously recommended this, and it's a good review. But it's a red speech mark. What does that instantly make you think? Oh, it's bad. So what, by looking at a red, you know, a single, <laughs> so it's a single star in a red <laughs> speech mark. Straight away, part, some people go, oh, bloody hell, it's only got one star. And you actually have to read it to then go, oh, awesome, easy, to, okay, fine. So this is actually a trust index critique. Hopefully you're watching. Please turn that to green, <laughs> uh, not a red one. That's not good. But yeah, cool. Okay, enough of me. Let's move on. Um, well, let's move on to another one of my businesses. No, so Float Norwich is um, an interesting one because it sort of goes against a whole bunch of normal things that I've done. Um, I've had this super clean before where, you know, not very much text and yeah, you know, like nothing. And then over time I've started beefing it up with a bit more words, a bit more crowded space. And I, and I don't know why it works. It just does. Because normally when you go to like, I don't know, what is the latest Apple iPhone? Apple iPhone. I don't know. iPhone shit. Um, where is it? Apple, what is it? 11. Apple are really good at clean space. So lots of whites. Uh, so n lots of big pictures. Wow, this is not the best landing page to be fair. Let's look at iPad, let's see if something else there. Mm, okay, it's not what I was thinking of, but normally tech companies are good at white space. They'll have nice pretty pictures, not much words like this, and lots of white space. And white space is good because it focuses your, your eye spots. So like here, right now, what am I looking at? I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at the, the very few words. So that's good. White space is good. And so originally, floatnorwich.com or .co.uk was very white spacey because I wanted people to look at the float tub, the float, you know, whatever. And I don't know, over, over the years, I just realized I've just crowded it out a bit more and it's worked. Um, like book a cryo session, I was really anal I wanted it to shiver um, whereas the floating ones I wanted to chill out and float so little things like that work it may uptick your, conver your overall conversion rate by like 0.01% but that's all you're doing that's what CRO is you're just upticking as many things as you can by 
one percent or point one percent or whatever, and it adds it. Adds up. We've got some videos and stuff like that. Um, obviously, it's pinky. There's some cryo stuff, uh, and then the booking stuff is really crucial. So if you if you have something, so I'm I'm thinking straight away of Aaron here. So Aaron um, is a tattoo specialist guru god um, who's really good at tattoos, basically, and he no doubt has people book you know going to his website and booking in. Now the booking software you use is so critical. Now obviously we're in the health and health space and so there's some typical booking um, platforms like Mind, Body, um, oh, there's a few and we used all of them and they're, they're all shocking and at the moment, so in hindsight, I, I should actually just create my own but I just, you know, risk your reward, there's bug rule reward so I can't be asked. Um, so for example, let's book a float and I'm not happy with this and my web's got so the first thing I'm not happy with is that we've got two scroll bars never have two scroll bars and that's because the booking surface that we're using is obviously embedded here so it's weird when you're scrolling do I scroll like this oh I hate it's horrible so that's hurting conversion rates now I don't actually drive traffic to the website when I when I do float ads I drive them to a direct ad uh, landing page where there is no double scroll so that's that's nothing so on here, when they click on this, um, I can't get rid of, so it doesn't matter what pod they choose, but you click this, um, and it's it's the best out of a bad bunch. So when you're going through all this, it's and, and then they automatically get a, a text message, emails, text message like 24 hours beforehand. It's all automated, it's pretty cool. But then I think if we look at is it Floatworks, one second. They, I remember they use a different booking service because we used it to begin with. Was it MindBody? Yeah, MindBody. This is so confusing. It's ridiculous. We used this for about two years and like, oh, it's it's horrendous. So obviously they've embedded their booking thing, but it's just slow and clunky. And there's so many clicks you have to do typically, and the more times you have to make someone click, the more bored they're gonna get. Um. Like I'm just trying to buy a simple float from them. I'm having to sign in. I don't want to sign in. I don't know you. I just want to book a float. I just want to book a tattoo. I don't want to give my inside leg measurements and my postal address. Just I want to book. Whereas this is just straight away going to put me off. So that's one thing I've made sure that we don't. You know, you you just don't want barriers to entry. So that's that. Um, ignore the realistic trader. Okay, so let's quickly breeze through some of these, and then because I'm aware of the time here. And also, I'm hogging the the airspace. So, yeah, last night, Adam, um, I think, and Aaron was here. I found. Um, so I just bought this Hoddle hoodie. I don't know if you can see it. And we were like, and I didn't know where I found it because it was a Facebook ad. And then I looked, I scrolled through my um, inbox, and I finally found it. It's Mr. Goo Goo and Miss Go. dot com. And I spent 150 quid last night on just buying random t-shirts and hoodies. So whenever it arrives, you'll start seeing me modeling some crazy ass hoodies soon. Um, <clears throat> but they've done it really well. So obviously this is a, a, a fashion sort of clothes uh, e-commerce site, but they've done it so well. So like, for example, I actually came here to buy some uh, hodl uh, like sweatpants type, type things, and I ended up parting with 100 I think 145 pounds or something like that and the reason being is that whenever I picked on you know this one I just pick on any old thing obviously I was selecting the size and by the way it's good that they had stock of all sizes a lot of companies don't they made it easy to add to cart that had a really easy size chart annoyingly is in centimeters most clothes in UK are done in inches so that was a bit annoying but but yeah it is nice and easy but then I started clicking on some of these. I was like, oh, if I'm getting this. And they had the same design for, for shorts, pants, um, trousers, whatever. So I started clicking other stuff. Ah, yeah, other people like this. Yeah, cool. I want this. And then this is all I was doing. I was just adding to cart, add to cart, add to cart. Um, yeah, and then and the actual checkout process was really good. So they got a nice selection here from ooh, socks. I do need new socks. Do they have Bitcoin socks? Anyway, so I'll do that another time. Um, so it's it's a really, really good example of an e-commerce sort of um, website uh, for, for clothes. And I guarantee you, they probably most likely don't have any stock. This is probably just a, an interface where 
they they probably got a designer to you know put Doge design. And by the way, I did buy a Doge shirt yeah last night. Um, <clears throat> put it on everything. Just get that picture. Put it on everything. And they'll see what people buy. And when someone buys, all that's going to go is they're then going to place the order to like a supplier in China. And I don't know when my f f clothes come, but I'm not expecting them to come tomorrow. I'm pro they'll probably arrive next week. But I guarantee you, most likely they don't have any stock or very low amounts of stock. So that's a really good example. And also it's fast. When I'm clicking around here, okay, I've got slow internet, but with my slow internet, it's fast. Um, so that's pretty cool.